Hello and welcome to the next series of video lectures I'm going to give, this time on system security. I'm going to try and divide this up into three videos. The first, as you can see here, is going to be on malware. Then after that, we're going to have another video on hacking and related issues. And then finally, we're going to have a video on security policies and ways that we can hopefully prevent system security problems. So let's take a look at the first topic here, which is going to be malware. Malware stands for malicious software. It's software that is designed specifically to gain access or damage a computer without the knowledge of the owner. And there are many different types of malware. I'm going to run through some of the most common types and give you a short definition of what each of them mean. So we'll start with a virus. This is the classic type of malware that have been around for a long time. A virus is simply a piece of software that infects files and copies itself whenever that file is run. So you have a program file, you double click on it. There's a virus in that. You've now activated it and it can now spread and copy itself across other files on your system. Worm. A worm is similar to a virus, but different. A worm is more advanced. It can copy itself without action from the user. So once a worm is on your system, it'll try and run your mailbox. It'll try and email itself out to all your friends, all the people you know, all your contacts. It'll try and copy itself to other devices. If you're running on a network, a worm will try and copy itself from computer to computer across the network. A worm is a lot smarter than a virus. So in fact, when people often talk about viruses, they don't actually mean virus. Usually nowadays they mean worm because most people aren't technically inclined and they tend to get these terms mixed up. Trojan. Trojans are nasty. These are pieces of malware that disguise themselves as legitimate software that you want. So it might be a free game, a picture, an image, a sound file, something that you want to download and put on your computer. But in fact, there's a little bit of a nasty secret hidden in there. It's a Trojan. And once it's on your system, it's going to be able to do bad things to your computer or download more malware onto your computer so that, again, people can gain access to your computer, can run other types of malicious software. Spyware does exactly what it says on the tin. It's software that once it's on your computer can spy on you, monitor your web viewing habits and do other things that really you don't want it to do. Adware. Essentially, it forces your browser to display unwanted advertisements. Obviously, the people behind the adware can then get money from you viewing these advertisements. Farming. In this case, uh, the piece of software redirects your browser to a fake version of a website. So you type in the website that you want to go to, and then this piece of malicious software will redirect you to a kind of fake website. And once you're there, hope, they're hoping that you'll log in, and then they can get your usernames or your credit card details or other things like that. Click fraud secretly uses your computer resources to click on advertisements. So as I'm sure you know, the main way people make money online is through advertising. And often advertisers will pay for every time somebody clicks on their advertisement on a website. So if you can write a piece of malicious software that once is on a user's computer will then activate their web browser and go on and click on all these advertisements many times, this is all happening in the background, so the user's not aware that it's happening, but the people behind this are going to make a lot of money from your computer. Ransomware. Again, some really nasty stuff here. This has been on the news a lot recently. This is when the malicious software encrypts critical files and data on a computer system and demands a payment to unlock them. If you're lucky and you pay it, they will actually decrypt your files. If you're unlucky, because these people are criminals and they're really not sympathetic to you, then even if you pay the ransom, all your system files will still be encrypted. This can be a big problem because it can happen to big organizations, banks, hospitals, people who really need their data. Rootkits. 
These are nasty little pieces of malicious software. They're designed to enable access to a computer or area of its software not otherwise allowed. So what a rootkit does is it gets through your permissions, gives itself kind of super user access, and then it can hide away in your computer and possibly hide the existence of other pieces of malicious software. So once you have a rootkit on your system, they can be very difficult to get rid of. And even if you think you've removed them, they can kind of reinstall themselves and reinstall other pieces of malicious software without your knowledge. So often there's special software that you can download to try and remove rootkits. Scareware. This was a big problem a few years ago. I'm not seeing it so much anymore, but I'm sure it's still out there. This prompts the user with a fake problem and presents a solution that involves downloading further malware. So again, you go to a website and you'll see something like this. It'll flash up a little pop-up telling you that your computer has got a virus. It's got a lot of problems. You need to download their software. You download their software and again, it'll pop up and say you have 300 viruses and all these things are happening. And again, it's all just a scam. It, they just want to be able to put more bad software on your computer or they want you to give them their credit card details or pay them money in some way to remove a problem that doesn't actually exist. So that's why we call it scareware. So we've got a little table here. This just goes through some more different types of common malicious software, gives you another definition here. Feel free to pause the video, have a read of this, make some notes if you need to. So how do we protect ourselves against malicious software? Well, the classic example is to use antivirus or more precisely anti-malware software. There are lots of famous brands that you can download and install on your computer systems. Just be aware that new viruses and trojans and worms are being produced all the time. So you have to keep this software up to date. There's no point having antivirus software on your computer if you haven't updated it for two years. Email attachments should be treated with caution. Malware could be passed into a network by attached documents. So often if you are a bad agent and you want to infect somebody's computer system or gain access to a network, you'll just send a spam email. It'll have an Excel spreadsheet or another file attached to it. And if somebody double clicks on that, you're putting a virus into their system that gives you access. So be very careful about emails, especially about opening attachments from people you're not sure about. If you're using an online email provider, somebody like Microsoft or Gmail, usually these will scan incoming emails and try and remove any malware, remove any bad programs before you get access to it. Very important, you should perform regular operating system updates. Most operating systems, for example, Windows or Mac OS, will automatically update themselves from time to time. This is really important because part of this update process is to install the latest fixes for vulnerabilities that have been discovered in that operating system. If you've got an older operating system that hasn't been updated in some time, there could be security holes that malware could exploit in order to gain access to your programs and your files and your information and install themselves in such a way that they're very difficult to remove. If you keep your system up to date, it's more difficult for uh, these bad programs to find these problems and exploit them. So always keep your operating system up to date. It's absolutely crucial. Peer-to-peer -peer file sharing is another common source of malicious software. So again, if you're downloading free movies or free games from BitTorrent, these files need to be scanned. They need to be uh, looked at really carefully because this is a common way of sharing of spreading bad programs throughout the world. You've also got to keep your browser up to date, whether you're using Firefox or Chrome or Microsoft Edge or anything else. Often older browsers have security weaknesses and they need to be updated so that these security weaknesses can be fixed. And this minimizes the possibility of these bad programs gaining access to your computer. 
it's not just big box PCs, it's not just your desktops and your laptops you have to watch out for nowadays. You've got to be careful for things like smartphones and tablets because these also need protection and care and you have to make sure that they're also going to be safe from these types of malicious software because there's a lot of iPhones, there's a lot of iPads, there's a lot of Android phones. So nowadays, a lot of the malicious software that's being written is being produced for these mobile devices because often users aren't expecting that software to be out there. They're almost more vulnerable than people using traditional PCs. So whatever type of device you're using, be careful. And finally, to guard against any number of different threats, not just malware, you should make sure all your important data is backed up regularly, preferably off-site. So this is true if you're just a personal user, but it's doubly true if you're running a business, if you've got a big corporation, you've got to make sure your data is backed up and it's somewhere safe in a different location. So if something does gain access to your system like ransomware, you can just back up your data and you don't have to worry about it. Okay, I'm going to stop there because I think that's quite a lot for one video. Feel free to go back, check out anything you want. If you've got any questions, just leave them underneath and I'll try and get back to you. Uh, please like, please subscribe or dislike and unsubscribe. It's your choice. But good luck with your studies and I'll see you in the future.